Hi, welcome to Chemistry 1001. We're talking about states of matter. This particular topic is about the equilibrium vapour pressure. What is it? Well, if you listened to the previous lecture, you will have understood that whenever there's a liquid in equilibrium with the gas above it, there is a something there's a vapour above the liquid and this vapour has a pressure. That's called the equilibrium vapour pressure. Generally speaking, uh, if we have a liquid in equilibrium with its vapour, that liquid can be considered to be boiling in a single phase system. For example, if we have water in equilibrium with its vapour and nothing else present, then we can consider that to be the boiling point of water because we can only have coexistence of water and water vapour, two phases in, in coexistence, if the water and the water vapour are in equilibrium and that means the system's boiling. But in a multi-phase system, it's not necessary that the system, uh, that the vapour has to be boiling. What do I mean by a multi-phase system? So, suppose we have a glass of water in an atmosphere of oxygen and nitrogen. So we have water, water vapour from the glass evaporating and in addition, in addition we have extra components, oxygen and nitrogen. In that case, uh, we do have a vapour pressure above the liquid. Some of the liquid vaporises, but we don't say that the liquid is boiling. We don't say the liquid is boiling, but nevertheless, there is a vapour pressure above the glass of water, and we can measure that. OK, let's return to this slide, equilibrium vapour pressure. We have a graph here of three different molecules, diethyl ether, ethanol and H2O, moving from left to right, and we have a pressure on the vertical axis and temperature over here. These are plots of the equilibrium vapour pressure. We say that the substance boils uh, when the equilibrium vapour pressure reaches the normal atmospheric pressure. So for instance, diethyl ether uh, has the weakest forces uh, among all of these three molecules and as a result it boils earlier. It boils at the lowest temperature, 34.6 degrees, and this is the equilibrium vapour pressure. It rises and rises and rises until it reaches uh, one atmosphere of pressure. At that pressure, bubbles can form in the liquid uh, and it happens to be at 34.6 degrees C and that is when that substance will boil if, if the applied pressure of the system is one atmosphere pressure. If the applied, system, if the applied pressure was less, for example, uh, let's say um, 54 kilopascals, we would have a boiling temperature of 20. That's because the equilibrium vapour pressure would reach that external pressure, in this case 54 kilopascals, at only 20 degrees Celsius. So lowering the applied pressure will lower the boiling point. This is something you already know, and this is the graph which is showing that. As we go to ethanol, which has stronger intermolecular forces, it has an OH bond, so there is hydrogen bonding, we see that uh, the vapour pressure is smaller. For example, here the green line lies below the red line, so the vapour pressure at a particular temperature is less than diethyl ether. So as a result, we have to raise the temperature higher before it starts to boil, 78.3. And water has the strongest intermolecular interactions. Its pressure lies, its equilibrium vapour pressure lies below ethanol and diethyl ether and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So the boiling temperature tells us something about the intermolecular interactions, the strength of them in the liquid phase, but also, also the vapour pressure curves tell us equally the same information in more detail because they allow to predict the boiling temperature at any pressure. I hope you understood that. See you later.